model of TKL. So let's try to do something similar to this one. Jump to SolidWorks with Alt Alt Tab. The menu in the top here could be pinned, so if you click on that one, it doesn't need to go in and out all the time. We would like to have a brand new part, so we choose new. And here we could choose between part, assembly and drawing. But I double click part and we get into the part mode. We choose a plane to work on and I will go for the front plane and I will ask for a sketch. So it goes automatically flat here. And now we just need to do something similar to this one here. So it's almost like a circle here. So if you go close to something, you get a dotted line that you could get help from. So by doing that, I know I'm in the center. And when we do this, we could also see that the size here is pretty small. There is also a possibility to dimension this. So already here, we might put in a value here that is kind of seems reasonable. So a tea kettle, I don't think 90 millimeter is, is enough. I, I would like to have a big one. So let's see if I go for 150 or something like that. And this is an important step. So you get real life values. Okay, so if we go back here to the image, there is like a foot here. And we would like to kind of have maybe the knob and everything in one go. So let's see what we could do. So first of all, we just would like to make half of this. And the reason for that is that we will use the revolve command. So we will just take a flat line here and click twice, escape to get out from that line command. And then there is a really nice trim possibility, like a laser beam, you just hold down and everything that it touches will be burnt away. So we talked about having a foot here and I also realized that a half circle there doesn't really look good. So maybe we could have a little bit more of an elliptic shape here. Uh, we could even uh, go for something a little bit more freeform shaping. So we have spline tool here. And if you're coming from a surface modeler like Alias or Rhino, we have this style spline, style spline that is very similar in the way that you work with it. So let's try with this one and, and let's exchange this boring radius here. So maybe I'll start a little bit lower and then I could go out, something like that. Come back in here and escape. So now we have, these are like CVs or edit points or whatever you would like to call them. And here we could, for instance, we could set this exactly on the same height here. So if we activate this one, we could ask it to be absolutely flat by shift clicking here and set it horizontal to each other. So we don't need to do it, but that is a possibility that we could do. And now we know it's absolutely flat there in the middle. Okay, let's go a little bit further out. So we're appro approximately on 150 uh, millimeter di diameter. Okay, so something like that. And the, the old stuff here, we could just take it away with the laser. So that's really nice. And we also wanted to have like a foot here. So maybe you could just do a circle. And again, I use the laser beam. I like it. Okay, um, now we have, yeah, the knob. So let's do the knob here. Uh, and we could do the knob in several ways. We could start with just a, a, a straight line, go up a little bit. And then if you go out and go back and come out again, it becomes a radius. So if you like that, then you have that possibility. So I have a line, but then if you come back and go out, you have a radius. 
Okay, so something like that and into the middle there and back. Okay, take away some of the stuff that I don't need. So I would like to have one closed region here to be able to revolve this. Um, and most of the stuff here is blue, which means that it's not completely constrained. You could, you could grab something here and, and start to to move it around. Undo if you do a mistake there. Uh, so we, we could continue here to put in dimensions or other kind of constraints. One constraint could be that this one, I would like it to be touching down here. Oh, by the way, this line here, let's chop it off. So get rid of that. And now we get even a preview of a, that we have a closed region that probably will work nice when we revolve. So that's good. But let's have this one touching down here. And the reason I would like to do that is right now there is, it's not on Z0 and it could be a good thing to have it positioned in space in a nice way. So I put in a center line and the center line is just a construction geometry that you could use for, for different purposes. So in this case, it will be like a floor. And in SolidWorks, if you shift click two things, you could force them to be connected in some way. So here you could, for instance, ask for tangent. And then this one grows. So then you might realize, oh, that's not good. Undo. And then we could force this to be a certain value. So if you put in dimension there we could say yeah this foot here it should be just be eight millimeter and it will stay eight millimeter and if you look at the cursor you see that dimensioning symbol but if i choose escape we go out from the dimension tool and again i will try to connect these and see how it reacts now now it keeps the eight millimeter radius there and this one become another kind of shape here and it's it's a piece of a spline there but we could actually accept this and then we could take away this and, and exchange it with with uh, a straight line if we like so if i just do something like that and do a trim and we again have a filled region there Okay, and remember that we could always work with these. Okay, I'm still in the line tool, so escape. And then I could start to drag and reshape this. So now you have an opportunity here to, to work with this. And I thought I had this constraint. So let's redo the constraint. I think I deleted the old point there. So if I make that horizontal, then we can see that this came down and now it's absolutely flat there. Okay, I like the shape there, so we have a closed region and there is still a lot of blue stuff here. You could continue to do some dimensioning, for instance, uh, from, from this point to the middle. Uh, and if I do that, I could set, oops, that didn't work. Oh, because this is an ellipse, it's a little bit tricky, it doesn't really know what I'm... Uh, dimensioning towards so, so in this case if you like to be very precise we could make a, a construction line and then we could force this construction line with a shift click to be tangent and now this is just a construction uh, line so it doesn't make any geometry but we could force that one to have a certain distance uh, and now we could, for instance, say, I would like it to be exactly 75 millimeter. And now we could, could have the radius here exactly on the value that we prefer. And you could continue to, to put in values here, but I, I think we're good. Let's go out from the sketch, the absolutely flat sketch. And by the way, if you middle tumble, uh, you see that we're just in a s flat sketch here. And if you do this by mistake, remember that you could do 
space bar and then you could just click on the normal to symbol and then it will go normal to the sketch or you could use space bar and if you know that this is the direction you could just click on this area here on the cube we're happy with this. We go out from the sketch and if we have a sketch, we could take this and revolve it around. So in this case, I would like to choose feature revolve. And because the sketch was already picked and selected, it grabbed it instantly. And for the moment, it doesn't know which axis to revolve around. So in this blue window, we need to choose something to rotate around. I click on that and we get a preview. And right now we could go for a right click on the mouse or we could go for the corner and say OK. And then there is nothing in the corner anymore, which means we're, we're done with this feature. So we have made a revolved thing here. And instantly we realize that the, the knob there is really silly and ugly. But that's, that's fun. Let's keep it that way.